two wars, maybe three. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, the guy who can't handle a few short stares insists that the U.S. can handle multiple wars. Are the wars in Israel and Ukraine more than the United States can take on at the same time? We're the United States of America, for God's sake. The most powerful nation in the history, not in the world, in the history of the world. The history of the world. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. The momentum is clearly building toward deepening military involvement by the United States in a war against Hamas. He expressed a, a need for air-to-ground munitions, precision-guided uh, uh, weapons, and we're going to continue to, uh, to do everything we can to provide them the support that they need. We rapidly moved a carrier battle group uh, into the region, and uh, that carrier battle group uh, provides us uh, with a number of options. But that's just the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is readying 2,000 American troops to deploy there, and nearly 2,000 more are heading to the area. Now, that would represent a major escalation of the U.S.'s role, which means it's probably a good time for us to stop to think, how is this going to affect our national security interests in the United States? But thinking ahead isn't something that people like Lindsey Graham ever do much of. When there's the chance to throw gasoline on a fire, he has the can... And he has the match. Iran, if you escalate this war, we're coming for you. Are you effectively poised to declare war on Iran? That's very strong language. I, I am poised to use military force to destroy the source of funding for Hamas and Hezbollah. Wait, did he say he's poised to use military force? Someone should tell Lloyd Austin. It's out of a job. Of course, it goes without saying that Hamas terrorists should be destroyed, and we support Israel 100%. But let's also face facts. If history is any guide, our weak and woke Pentagon leadership could actually make matters worse. A disturbing report in today's Wall Street Journal contends that our most powerful global adversaries and enemies are already gaining power and advantage because of this situation. The Hamas-Israel conflict is proving a boon for America's main geopolitical rivals. China, Russia, and Iran have long sought to undermine the U.S.-backed international system and are now taking advantage of America's distraction. Then these eerie words from the former Finnish prime minister, Alexander Stubb, who speaks of a shifting and moving world order. When the U.S. leaves power vacuums, someone's going to fill those vacuums. Now, last week, I pressed Ophir Falk, who is the foreign policy advisor to Netanyahu, about whether China had stepped in to offer any support for them. Have you heard any support or received any support from President Xi of China? We've received uh, support from uh, many, many leaders in, uh, from the free world. There's a long list of, of friends, allies of Israel who have uh, supported us. It's a diplomatic answer about China. They're not, offer not offering any support. <laughs> That's not surprising to me at all. Well, he avoided answering directly, but of course we knew the answer. Just as it had done with Ukraine, China will try to triangulate this chaos. More from the journal, China has embraced the Palestinian cause in a way it hadn't done in decades. It's pointedly refrained from using the word terrorism as it described the Hamas attack, much to Israel's dismay, even though there were four Chinese citizens killed by Hamas and three more taken hostage. That's according to Israeli authorities. The crux of the matter is that justice has not been done to the Palestinian people. China calls on all parties to exercise restraint, de-escalate regional tensions as soon as possible, and prevent further expansion of the conflict. Wow. As for Russia, the Lithuanian foreign minister said that Russia has a huge interest in prolonging the conflict in Israel as long as possible, calling it a big win for the Russians tactically to have America's attention diverted. Now, our Pentagon hears this and they say they have the ability to walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, really? Ukraine, the Middle East? And what about if China decides to waltz into Taiwan? Walk, chew gum, and juggle at the same time? With this guy as commander in chief? Denying the existence of transgender people, silencing teachers, banning books, extreme MAGA Republicans trying to undo virtually every bit of progress we've made. Remember, to him, the MAGA Republicans are the big threat. 
Now, if Biden really believes what he's saying about half the country, the racist, you know, anti-trans, they're horrible people, why would America have any right to claim the moral high ground overseas? Of course, these aren't serious people in the Biden administration. They lurch from crisis to crisis without a real plan, except maybe to make America weaker. The truth is, the Biden team went to war against our energy independence. Then he drained our strategic petroleum reserve to help Democrats in the midterms, putting us directly at risk right now because we're in crisis mode. Now our reserve at a 40-year low, which gives all the cards to Russia, the Saudis, the Iranians, and the Venezuelans. Way to go, Jill. Now, given all this, someone is going to have to explain to me why we should suddenly trust them to handle even more difficult challenges. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.